Hey everyone and welcome back. We're just going to jump right into these spoilers today. Whole lot to discuss. Whole lot going on. First up we got Swarm Guild Mage. It is a deuce dropper. It's a creature elf shaman. Uncommon. Now the first thing that stands out about this card obviously is the artwork. But the second thing, there's two different things you can do here with your mana. And I, I really appreciate that because... Later in the game, or even, you know, early game, maybe you just don't have the right mana to cast certain spells. Well, this is going to allow you to at least use that mana, and it doesn't doesn't go wasted. Um, and for two, you can tap the card, you gain two life. And then for its five, tap, creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and gain menace until end of turn. This is going to fit nicely. Um, elf decks, green, black, they're coming back. Uh, you better be ready because, uh, man, green and black, I'm telling you, is, is going to be the two colors that are going to dominate this new standard. For sure, hands down. There's just a lot of powerful cards, even some more we're going to discuss here in a bit. They're just very, very strong, uh, and, and it's going to show. Maximize Altitude. It's a one drop. Target creature gets plus one, plus one. And flying until end of turn. It has the jump start mechanic. Again, what that is, you may cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a card in addition to paying its other costs. Then exile this card. So just the fact that you can jump start, it's not just a wasted... I like that it's not a wasted spell. So instead of just target creature getting gets plus one, plus one, and flying until end of turn, at least you can cast this card yet again. It's similar to flashback. Really, it is. Inescapable Flame. Oh, yes. I like this card because it's going gonna, it's gonna to create a little problem for all those blue players out there who just like countering stuff. Yeah, you're probably going to find this uh, maybe a one of or two of in most decks or sideboarded, you know, in case uh, a player has fear and they're going to go up against blue, which does happen quite often. I'm sure anyone running red, you're going to find this card in the sideboard. Uh, this spell can't be countered. Inescapable Flame deals six damage to any target. That is powerful. Yes, it's six to cast. It's steep. But the fact that it can't be countered, I mean, even two of these cards casted, that's 12 damage, all right? That's like 60% of, of your opponent's life you just wiped out of their starting life total with just two of these spells casted. Yeah, I know, it's six. Uh, it's, it's a lot to cast, but I can definitely see this sideboarded um, for all the blue hate decks out there. It's, this is going to see some play. And for sure, this is going to see play in limited. Arc Light Phoenix, 4-drop. This card I'm just confused about. I'm not sure what to make of this. Uh, I do like the flavor text, Some Storms Never Die. It's a 4-drop Phoenix flying in haste at the beginning of combat on your turn. If you cast three or more instants and or sorceries this turn, you may return Arc Light Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. That is a hefty load right there to drop. Um... Storm players, would you play this in your deck? I only say that because I see the word storm on the card. Oh, boy. Uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you cast three or more instants in our sorceries this turn, you may return it. Uh, four drop. Should this even be mythic? I think this, this should have been a rare. I, I don't think it's... I just don't think it's that powerful. I, I really... I don't know. Am I crazy for thinking that? I, now... The cool thing with this card is with the whole jumpstart ability, that's going to allow these phoenixes uh, to come back from the graveyard. I mean, you can discard this into the graveyard uh, with that jumpstart mechanic. And then if you do it enough, you jumpstart enough, you are able to bring this phoenix right onto the battlefield. I think that's pretty neat. Um, I I'm not sure... I I really got to see how it plays out in standard. Uh, I'm sure this card will see play in that fashion, but to what extent and how powerful this card will be, how big of an impact? I mean, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not seeing this card do a whole lot. Um, then again, I'm probably wrong on that one. I really, I got to hear what you guys think on this one. Am I a fool for saying that? Is this card just amazing? Is it overpowering? I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. I kind of got to see how it all plays out. Midnight Reaper. Now, this card I'm a fan of. It's a zombie. You guys know I love my zombies. It's a three drop. 
Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, Midnight Reaper deals one damage to you and you draw a card. Now, the really cool thing about this card, definitely the artwork, huge fan of that. I would like to get that framed on my wall, just saying. The really cool thing about this card is what it says. It says whenever a non-token creature you control dies. It doesn't say whenever another non-token creature you control dies. So that would apply to even Midnight Reaper. So if Midnight Reaper were to die, you're going to take that one damage and draw a card. I think that's really, really neat. It's a 3-2. Zombies, I think, needed something like this. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it can... Well, I wanted to say it would go well with that... Uh, uh, Lord of the Accursed, um, but he's about to rotate out. So, uh, neat card. Um, something needed to replace, I guess, maybe Lord of the Accursed. And uh, yeah, it's not a zombie lord, but this card looks to be pretty strong and uh, able to get cards out on, uh, get cards in our hand quickly. I like the card. Govern the Storm. It's a five drop. Govern the Storm deals five damage to target creature. For sure, this is only going to see limited play. Uh, there's not too much more to discuss. Let's read the flavor, I guess. Because of Niv-Mizzet's disappearance, Ral took charge of the guild. He had dreamed of this day, but he felt like a pawn in someone else's game. That's clever. Um, just this card's only going to see limited play. It, it's I don't see where else it would... I mean, if it said five damage to any target, I mean, that'd be that'd be ridiculous as cards he play everywhere. But because it's limited to just a target creature, uh, I just don't think it's going to make its way into too many decks. Boros Locket. Now, these are cool. We got some new lockets. We got lockets, period. Um, and this goes across uh, all the color combinations. Um, for instance, we start off with Boros. Add a uh, mountain or plains. Um, to your mana pool. I like saying that. Uh, and then for any combination there, sacrifice Boros Locket, draw two cards. The ability to draw two cards in any of these uh, is amazing because not all of these colors have card draw ability. You know what I'm saying? Like they do in their own special ways, but this is going to be a ramp card. And on top of that, an ability to draw two cards. These cards are going to see a heck lot of play, I believe. Um, they well well played, Wizards. Well played. Here's the Is It one. We got the Golgari, uh, which is going to see a lot of play, uh, and Dimmer Locket. Um, just really really cool. The artwork on them's nice. Good flavor. Wear this and take your place among the shadows, wise, lethal, and unseen. Nice, Mister Spymaster. Really nice. Um, Goblin Banneret. Am I saying that right? Banneret, sure. It's a one drop. Creature Goblin Soldier Mentor. Whenever the, Again, what that means, whenever this creature attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on target attacking creature with less power. That is pretty neat. The Mentor ability alone in this card that it's a one, one. And sometimes people might miss their curve. So the fact that it has something to do, Goblin bear, uh, Banneret gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn by tapping two. Not bad. I can't say this card's great. I don't. It's not the Goblin that the Goblin decks needed. But we'll probably see a, a bit of play, mostly in limited, I'd say. But it can work its way into Goblin decks. I don't see why not. That mentor ability is sweet. It really is. And the fact that it's got fire breathing... It's okay, but um, maybe, you know, I don't know. This card, it's okay. Uh, without getting too carried away, I just give it, it's an okay. I don't think it's going to make a huge impact. This card, I believe, is going to make a huge impact. Hello, Vraska Golgari Queen. Sweet artwork. I like that the art actually goes above now. Uh, the, um, the card, you know, like onto the border. I, I like that. Uh, it's a four drop. Legendary Planeswalker, Vraska. Plus two, you may sacrifice another permanent. If you do, you gain one life and draw a card. Seeing Vraska for only four, uh, I think that's a first. Usually she's pretty steep in casting, like a five or six drop. I think there's one that's seven that just came out too. Um, you may sacrifice another permanent. If you do, you gain one life and draw a card. That is huge. Uh, we're going to gain one life off of that. And the ability to draw a card. Yes, we have to sacrifice something, but with so much graveyard interaction, 
that's going on in this current standard, uh, it's 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 a blessing. <laughs> that plus two is probably a blessing that you're going to sacrifice something. Odds are you're just going to be able to bring it back. It's minus three. Destroy target non-land permanent with converted mana cost three or less. Now this can be argued as a good thing or an okay thing. I think it's a good thing. Um, quite a few, de every deck, almost every deck, I'd say every deck uh, that is in standard is, is going to have a permanent with converted mana cost three or less. That's just how it is. Every single deck. Okay. So this card will be utilized quite well because it's always going to have a target 99% of the time. 99.99% of the time it's going to have a target. Is that too weak? Should it have been converted mana cost four or less work and destroy? And But again, it's not just targeting a creature or anything. It's targeting a non-land permanent. I mean, that is that is brutal. The only thing is a lot of cards in this new standard you're able to bring back creatures. You're able to bring, you're able to go into your graveyard and get something back out of it. So that might make this card a little dulled down. That's probably why they put the four mana cast on it, not five. I'm glad they didn't go that five for once. I can say they did well with the four, but it's minus nine loyalty counter. It's ridiculous. You get an emblem with whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player. That player loses the game. They lose the game. That's that's insane. This has happened before. It was on another card, um, another uh, one of these Golgari's, or uh, not Golgari. Uh, yeah, I think it was on a Planeswalker before. Um, but whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. That's very overpowering. I believe it's on Nebraska. That is very overpowering. But to get to that point, <laughs> that's not just overpowering. That's game winning. That's it. <laughs> To get to that point, uh, it's going to take you quite a few turns. Now, with some ramp helping out, maybe get this out turn three. Sure, why not? Uh, you're looking early as turn seven to use that. Uh, to use that minus nine. I mean, that's quite a ways away. But as I guess if you're just sitting there removing your opponent's creatures and whatnot or uh, any kind of threats, you build a deck like that, and then you're able to just sneak in with Vraska. Um with one of your creatures, sweet, uh, have at it. I, I think it's a really fun card. Probably one of the better Vraskas we've seen in a while. I, actually, this is probably the best Vraska we've ever seen. Uh, debate me. Uh, prove me wrong. <laughs> Vivid Revival, five drop. Return up to three target multicolor cards from your graveyard to your hand. Exile Vivid Revival, sweet card. Again, it's going to see it. This card will see a bunch of play. It's a sorcery. Um, it's a rare, I mean, but it, it will see a lot of play because you're returning three multicolor cards, black and green. I'm telling you, and this new standard is, is, is almost overpowering. We've seen a lot of, of powerful black green cards and, uh, yes, there, there's a new, there's a new king in town. I, I believe it's going to be green, black. So watch out, baby. It's coming. Disdainful stroke. It's a deuce drop. Counter target spell will convert a mana cost four or greater. This for sure is going to be in sideboards uh, for any player who's playing blue and standard right now. Just the ability to only tap two mana and counter a big old creature or big old uh, whatever. It's a spell uh, to counter anything that's four or greater. I mean, this can counter a planeswalker. You know, uh, th this thing will see quite a bit of, uh, it'll see play. Sideboard crazy. House Guild Mage, what are you about, man? It's a two drop. Human Wizard, for deuce. Target creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Okay. That alone is not bad. If you can just continuously. Nope, you can't attack with him. Nope, you can't attack with him. Nope, if you have the mana, of course. And then for three, you can surveil two at any time, which is sweet. Look at the top two cards of your library. Then put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest on top of your library in any order. Really cool. This card is definitely going to see a, a whole ton of play, especially those black blue decks. We um, uh, we're missing. Why can't I think of them? Oh my gosh, um, the one god. He, he's about he's rotating out here in a few weeks. Um, not that this card is going to replace him <laughs> by any means, uh, but 
uh, we needed something in the black blue column, and I think we got a little something here. Nothing too crazy, nothing too overpowerful, but not bad. Guild Mage's Forum, add a colorless for one, tap it, add one mana of any color. If that mana is spent on a multicolored creature spell, that creature enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. Yes, uh, this kind of land was needed, uh, especially for those decks with all the plus one, plus one counter cards. Uh, it's going to be a great interaction for that. Um, great. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Uh, I think this is just good. It's another way to make those uh, those cards more powerful when they hit the field. So there you go. Golgari find broker. Finally a broker. They finally printed a broker. There you go. For four, Elf Shaman. Uh, when find broker enters a battlefield, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, um, because we needed that. Uh, we needed more returning uh, stuff from the graveyard to our hand. And we got another card. Again, uh, this is, I think this, overall, this uh, this standard, maybe not in this standard, but this set, if you compare it to like Ixalan or something, or even Rivals of Ixalan, it was very basic. It was a much more simpler time then. We're going back into more complexity, I believe, is, is the word we're looking for. More intricate uh, styles of gameplay. There's going to be a lot of interaction. Um, where Ixalan might have been a further novice player, I'd say rivals of, uh, not rivals, um, but this new Ravnica, Guilds of Ravnica, is going to be more for the advanced player. Uh, let me hear your thoughts on that. I, I mean, these cards are a little more complex than how you're going to be working them. Not this card in particular, but just overall. Expansion and Explosion. Cool, cool. Copy target instant or sorcery spell with converted mana cost four or less. You may choose new targets for the copy. That's sweet. That is sweet. Is it loves it? Explosion. So not only you have something early game, but then you have a game finisher on the right hand side. You got explosion. Now once this card, you can only pick one or the other. Once this card goes bye bye, uh, that's it. It goes bye bye. You know, unless you're able to cast both at the same time when you draw it. That's insane, but. You get one or the other. You can't cast this like some of those Amonkhet cards where you're allowed to cast them from the graveyard, the other side of it. You can't do that. It, do, it doesn't work with these cards. You, you cast the left side, that's it, okay? You forget the right side exists. That's, that's how these cards work. Um, but Explosion deals X damage to any target. Target player draws X cards. That's a game finisher right there. Uh, I mean, Commander... What do you guys think? Uh, is this going to see some play in Commander? I think it will. I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, you got two options that are pretty nice here. Uh, and uh, Explosion deals X damage on a target. That's sweet. And for the expansion, you can copy a target instant or sorcery spell. That's any. And uh, some of those spells, they'll hit everyone on the field. So I, I'm sorry we jumped out and started talking about Commander, but you know. I can see this being uh, being played definitely there. So not bad. Um, what do you guys think of all these new spoilers? Which one's your favorite? Which one do you think is overpowering? Are there any? I don't think they were too... Nothing really too crazy in this one that was overpowering. It's just going to like take the cake. I'm just not happy with that Phoenix, honestly. Um, let me hear your thoughts and opinions. And what are you looking forward to seeing? And as always, PLA.